Hello, I am Asit, a PhD candidate in the Department of Mechanical Engineering, IIT Kharagpur. My work is in the field of thermal comfort and comfort standards with my supervisor, Prof. Ram Gopal. This presentation is a brief sum up of our findings from a review of over 90 thermal comfort field studies done across the world. The original work was published in the journal Building and Environment and you may refer to that publication for a more detailed analysis. Over the last couple of decades, thermal comfort research has been targeted towards energy efficient buildings that do not compromise occupant satisfaction. Inspired by this goal, a growing number of field studies on thermal comfort in different building types and different climatic zones have been conducted. The results from several of such field studies played a major role in getting adaptive comfort standards included into international comfort standards like ASHRAE standard 55 or the EN15251. Future buildings are likely to depend a lot more on natural ventilation and passive cooling. Comfort standards for such buildings are a focus of current research. Adaptation is pretty much inherent to the human nature and human beings do not passively endure their environment. They adapt themselves or make changes in their surroundings to retain their comfort. Adaptive actions have been classified by researchers into physiological, behavioral, and psychological types. Since climate influences all three of these adaptive actions, we decided to group the comfort studies using the Köppen-Geiger climate classification of the study locations. This illustration is of a room that relies on air conditioning for maintaining thermal comfort. This is a rather typical or stereotyped representation of air conditioned rooms. And in this type of rooms, there are no operable windows or fans. Doors also need to be kept closed to decrease the air, air conditioning energy costs. And often in air conditioned offices, there are rather formal dress codes. But in a naturally ventilated building, we expect to see multiple avenues of adapting the environment like fans, operable windows, indoor shading devices, and sometimes there is also a relaxed dress code that helps along. From our analysis, we reaffirmed certain established trends in comfort research. Naturally ventilated buildings do not compromise occupant satisfaction. With enough adaptive opportunities, occupants can adapt to a quite a broad range of indoor conditions. Most used adaptive measures across different climatic zones were related to adjusting clothing or modifying the air movement with fans or openings in the building facade. Higher air velocities to improve comfort in warmer conditions are also gaining wider acceptance amongst occupants and this acceptance is getting reflected in the modifications being made to comfort standards. Certain trends we noticed specifically from our analysis. Comfort zones and neutral temperatures of studies done, done in the same Köppen climatic zone showed significant overlaps. At least three pairs of field studies showed that neutral temperatures determined in a location do not vary over a significant duration of time. Occupants in choosing their adaptive actions are concerned by the ease, effectiveness and economy of the choice which we have called the three E's. Like opening a window is cheaper than switching on a fan, but if somebody else is footing the bill, occupants will move directly to switching on the fan or sometimes even AC if it is available, rather than using the window option. This could be the case even when the outdoors is quite pleasant. Adaptations related to clothing modifications deserve a special mention. Our clothing choices have helped us to adjust to climates ranging from extremely cold to extremely hot and humid. To paraphrase an old Norwegian saying, don't blame the weather if you did not dress appropriately. Several studies showed that traditional clothing ensembles uh, helped occupants to adjust better with the prevalent climate. However, with westernization of outfits, particularly in offices, this advantage presented by traditional wears is slowly getting lost. So, to sum up about adaptive thermal comfort standards and adaptive opportunities, the major point in favor of the adaptive comfort standards is the advocacy of greater adaptive opportunities and which mean greater control of the environments by the occupants. With enough adaptive opportunities at their disposal, occupants can be comfortable over quite wide ranges of temperature, much wider than advocated by conventional comfort standards. And this could lead to significant savings in energy bills. 
Certain buildings, due to their orientation, design, and purpose, can help or hinder adaptive actions. For example, occupants are, as a norm, more comfortable at homes than at offices even when the temperature and humidity conditions may be exactly the same. Buildings where occupants do not have enough adaptive opportunities receive poor comfort ratings. Even when, say, there are operable windows but the outer noise or pollution means occupants cannot open them, or there is a functional air conditioner but occupants do not have any control over the temperature being maintained, satisfaction levels can be hugely affected. Thanks for watching. We'll be posting similar short presentations on different aspects of our work. Do keep a track of this on my YouTube channel.